Globally, climate change poses a serious environmental threat to agriculture. Conversely, agriculture is one of the most significant contributors of greenhouse gases to climate change. This reciprocal relationship is commanding increased attention to the growing imbalance between the world's population and world food production. Dr. Jennifer Burney is an Associate Professor of Environmental Science at UC San Diego. Dr. Burney's research focuses on simultaneously achieving global food security and mitigating climate change. Dr. Burney, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks for having me. Agriculture is highly dependent on climate to produce the foods necessary to sustain human life. So how significant is the impact of climate change on agriculture and food security? Yeah, so first, just I'll uh, speak to the first part of your point there, which is that I think it's important for everyone to uh, really take a moment and, and envision the magnitude of the world food system, right? So food is produced by something like 600 million farmers. Every single person on the planet depends on what is produced, right? And there's a complicated network of intermediaries that, that are moving food between where it's produced and, and where it's consumed. And so this is, this is a system that literally, literally involves every one of us. And, uh, and those producers on whom we all depend are making decisions every year about what to grow and how to grow it based on, in part, their environmental expectations. So is it gonna be a good year? Is it gonna be a bad year? Is it hot? Is it dry? Um, and so on and so forth. Of course, economics also plays into it as well, but, but really on a year to year, season to season basis, that production is very dependent on the environment. And what we see when we look over time, over the past few decades, is that indeed um, these changing global um, climate patterns, so increasing temperatures and changes in precipitation have led to um, relative decreases in productivity. So globally, world food production has increased. We have sort of barely kept pace with population. But it, during that time, over the past few decades, we have, we have seen that global climate is sort of a, like a weighted blanket on our increasing productivity, right? So it, we would have produced more absent these human-induced climate changes than we did otherwise. So the rule of thumb is something like um, for every degree Celsius of increase in temperature, there's a relative yield loss of a few percent, um, you know, somewhere between one and two to 10 percent. It depends a little bit on the crop and the location, but we would, you know, roughly be producing uh, 10 percent more food um, absent recent human climate change. So on the flip side, farming creates greenhouse gas emissions, a fact that's widely known, but perhaps not really well understood. So how significant is the impact of greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture on climate change? Yeah, that's a great question. It depends a little bit on how you do the accounting, uh, right? So when we look at uh, global food and agriculture and land use emissions. So including everything that, um, that comes from soils, from animals, from rice production, and also from conversion of native habitats for more cropland, um, that's uh, about a quarter of total uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And that's not including things like um, you know, the fuel to drive tractors or the energy for pumping water for irrigation or the jet fuel for long range transport of food. Um, so if you include those things, it's probably upwards more like a third, uh, depending on how you, how you bin out the different emissions. So it, it's a major contributor. Um, at the same time, I think there's some real scientific uncertainties that um, lead us to sort of, um, perhaps underestimate or, or maybe put this as a secondary concern. I think the first is um, when we think about carbon dioxide emissions or greenhouse gas emissions more broadly, I think energy and industry just pop out and transportation as the obvious, obvious and, and frankly somewhat easy targets. Right? We, think of, we can think of substitutable technologies. There are real issues to be solved there, uh, but we, we sort of imagine what the substitution looks like 
when it comes to the world food system, uh, there's obviously no technology substitution for food. And there are some real questions about how low we could actually drive um, agricultural land use emissions, right? So sure, we can have electric tractors and we could imagine solar irrigation, uh, but when it comes to actually sort of emissions from soils and, uh, and what it would take to feed people, there, there are some real questions about whether that could actually be driven to zero. And I think that's, a, that's an uncomfortable reality. Well, as you're saying, amid this catch-22 situation, there are people going without enough food to survive. And as the world population increases, the need for food continues to grow. So some suggest agriculture could be part of the solution to climate change through adaptation and mitigation efforts. Are there efficient farming technologies and practices like this already being deployed? Yeah, so you bring up a really good point, which is that anytime you've got two systems where one is driving, you know, the second system is driving the first and the first is driving the second, you really worry about runaway effects, right? So we worry about, uh, you know, not being able to grow enough food, expanding cropland that makes more emissions, that heats the climate, and then so on and so forth. That's, that's the really bad, um, the bad version of this cycle. And so what we're really looking for are solutions that, that bring this back to a stable equilibrium, right? And so anything that is, for example, increasing productivity, so more production per area, and is therefore um, preventing or, um, or uh, not incentivizing expansion of cropland is a good solution, right? We really wanna keep uh, native habitats intact. We don't want that carbon going into the air. Um, anything that is reducing food waste and therefore like lessening the pressure to, to sort of produce more to fill that gap is helping. Um, and, and that could be, uh, you know, thinking about the United States and the, the strawberries rotting in your fridge, or it could be thinking about really smallholder farmers and enabling them to more effectively store their, uh, their products uh, over the course of the year. So there's a bunch of different um, ways to think about more efficient food storage and, and reducing food waste. I think the other thing is um, we could think also about um, being able to produce more, um, uh, more year round, sort of lessening the pressure uh, on seasonal uh, rain fed agriculture by um, smart deployment of irrigation and, and technologies like that that let farmers produce um, either an extended growing season or even add in a second growing season. So all of those things achieve sort of more, uh, more production per land area, so lessen that pressure. Um, but then we really also need to better understand uh, for even for just a, a regular robust growing system, how to reduce emissions um, from the systems. Well, although slow going, other sectors have identified technologies and practices that could substantially reduce emissions. For example, you did the study on the impact of replacing coal recently. Is it is it more difficult for the agriculture sector? What are the biggest obstacle, obstacles rather to the adoption of strategies that increase sustainable farming practices and reduce emissions? That's, uh, that's the, um, I don't know how to put price tag on it, but that's the 60 billion, you know, gazillion dollar question. <laughs> so I think there, first, there's no simple substitute, right? We all have to eat. So, um, so when we think about solutions, you know, there are demand side changes, right? We, I think everybody knows now that in, um, in situations where people have enough food to eat, and have real choice that eating less red meat is a very good climate strategy, right? These are, there's sort of more emissions per, uh, per calorie and per area <laughs> for, for meat than, than, and for red meat than anything else. Um, so there are demand side choices like that. Uh, I think there are also um, interesting technological questions. So um, on an annual basis, right, really healthy croplands can sequester carbon, right, can pull carbon out of the atmosphere into the soil. And there are some scientific uncertainties about the magnitude of that carbon sink. We talk about that in the United States um, as a potential 
um, really important magnitude piece of the puzzle, but we don't really know what the magnitude is and we don't really know how stable uh, that carbon zinc would be over you know, years to decades to centuries. And, and that's, um, you know, that's where we, we need more science uh, to, to better understand that. So, um, you know, I think there are behavioral choices like in, in certain areas and then there are technological uh, fixes, but but we really need to investigate them. It's not quite the same as swapping out, uh, you know, the full plant for a solar generator or or something like that, right? In your opinion, is there a strong enough focus on agriculture by government, by policymakers, in terms of taking a leading role in identifying and sourcing solutions to agriculture emissions, while also addressing the impact of climate change? Yeah, so to this, I'm an eternal optimist. So I would say, um, I think there are signs that make me, you know, have a positive outlook. However, the, the brief answer is no. <laughs> Everyone should be paying more attention to this. And it's a little bit of a mystery when we think about, for example, in the United States, this is not unique to the United States. This is playing out um, in, in many places in the world, but there's often a sort of pitting of agriculture and farmers against environmental environmentalists and, and environmental and climate interests when really uh you know there's no one more concerned with the evolution of the climate probably than than a farmer right uh as as, as the, the fraction of our population really most exposed in terms of livelihoods to climate so um you know i think any any society that's pitting these things as opposite sides uh, you know, of some debate is, is missing a real opportunity because I think it, it's absolutely true that, that farmers should be, and, and, and our food system should be leading the way in, um, in, in figuring out how to, how to build the world we need. Um, in the US, I think we have some really strong roots in this domain. Um, you know, our USDA uh, does some pretty amazing climate research. They are very focused on gathering this data that we need and working with farmers to understand what's going on. And so, so I do see signs of hope uh, in that regard as well. Well, feeding the world while fighting climate change is a massive challenge that, as you say, will require industry-wide effort and cooperation. We thank you so much, Dr. Bernie, for sharing your expertise and your insights on climate change and agriculture and agriculture and climate change. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me.